Hey guys, have you guys ever wanted to fly a C-17? Well now you can with this FPV kit that I designed for the C-17. We got the DJI camera in here and we've got head tracking for pan function. And I've also switched out the EDFs to a propeller so that way we can get longer run time. So let's take it up and see how it flies. Hey guys, welcome back to the workbench. Today's a really cool day. We're gonna be actually adding FPV to the C17. Before we get started, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys all the supplies. So I'm gonna be using the DJI Goggles 2 for this build. I'm also gonna be using the DJI 04 Air Unit Pro as the camera. I'm gonna use Tally Ho head tracker unit for head tracking. And then uh, there's a couple supplies you're gonna need to power the air unit. I will be using a spectrum controller and receiver for this build. To build this actual plane that I'm building, you're gonna need the STL files for the actual C17, and then you have to build it. I have a full build tutorial on my YouTube channel. And if you wanna make this thing FPV, you buy the FPV kit, which will come with a new nose piece, and then it has a few other parts that are gonna be required to set up the camera unit. The FPV kit actually comes with two F1 pieces. You have F1 FPV and F1 replacement, which is for if you've actually built the airplane already, you just want to cut the nose off and put on FPV kit. One has a lip here and one does not. To design this new FPV kit, I just went into Fusion, made a couple adjustments, added the cab draw, the camera, and the air unit. Uh, I did put the air unit on the top just so it adds a lot of cooling and you can actually attach a fan on the top of the FPV air unit if you'd like to. Now Bamboo Lab just came out their newest printer, the H2D. This thing is amazing. I was able to test this out for the FPV kit for the C17. I printed out the nose piece and all the parts required for the FPV kit. And I've also done a few other prints with this thing and this thing is working amazing. One of the key features of this printer is the dual extruder nozzle. So this allows you to have two rolls of filament loaded up at the same time to make faster color changing. The other cool thing that I don't think a lot of people are gonna to mention too much is the fact that you can just mount a spool right on the side. This is actually gonna allow us to be able to put bigger spools of filament, like a three or five kilogram spool. So that way we can print out a lot bigger parts because this printer is a lot bigger build volume and then have some AMS colors loaded up on the top on one kilogram spools and then you know, print mainly with one color and then feed in other colors. For this review, I just went ahead and printed out the FPV kit for the C17. Uh, but I actually have some really big projects planned this year on this channel. And this printer is gonna be at the forefront of the whole thing. So make sure to hit subscribe to my channel and uh, check out what I've got planned for this year. It's gonna be pretty sweet. Now that we got all the parts printed out, let's get back to work on the C-17. So the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and cut out this uh, piece here where the camera goes in to fuselage one. The easiest way to do that is with the Dremel tool. Here, I was just cutting out a piece where the DJI air unit wire will go down into the fuselage. We'll go ahead and mount a control horn into the camera mount. Now that camera mount can be adjusted if you deselect the uniform scaling function in your slicer and you can actually modify the size of that camera mount. Before we mount this onto the servo, you do want to make sure you use a servo tester and center that servo. Now I'll go ahead and glue this into the nose piece and we'll glue the support in there. Now you will see I'll change the servo out later on in the video to a gray Metal Gear servo. That's due to this servo, it actually was bad about halfway through before the work on this. I realized that it didn't really work very well, so I replaced it. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and mount the air unit onto the mount. And I go ahead and use screws for this, just longer two millimeter screws, but there are holes designed in this so that you can use zip ties if you'd like to. Now we're ready to mount this into the fuselage. Uh, before we do that, I do wanna talk about wiring the air unit. Uh, so I actually have the wiring harness for the air unit stripped down to the bare minimum. I just have it red and black wire. Now to power the air unit, you need at least 7.4 volts. So the simplest way to do that is you guys could put a separate battery pack in there. So at least a two cell battery, you can just plug it right into the power leads on the air unit and you'll have power. The other option is to run it off your flight pack. So in order to do this, you need to pull power before 
the power goes into the ESE. So what you've got to do is we've got to go ahead and splice into this battery uh, plug here. And in order to do that, I'm going to use these two pieces here, which this is a switch relay, which will allow me to control the power on and off with a channel on the receiver. Camera on, camera off. And then this here is a UBEC that will convert the power uh, from the battery pack to make sure that the air unit does not have too much voltage. The flight pack will plug into the ESC, the BEC will plug into the receiver, the switch unit will plug into a channel on your receiver, you'll plug that into your UBEC, then we'll go ahead and connect that to our battery pack and that power will run just like that right to the air unit. So I'll go ahead and pull back this connector. I'm gonna go ahead and cut off one of the JST plugs and solder that onto the connector so that we have an easy disconnect point here. We're gonna go ahead and put a servo connector on the end of the UBEC so that way I can just go ahead and use a standard servo lead to extend the wire to the air unit. Okay, so we have the FPV F1 all set up, ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and start to put it into the fuselage. So like I said before, I've already built this airplane. Uh, this is actually my prototype airplane. I built two of these. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off, leave you know half an inch or so before this seam, and then just cut it down to, there's a ring inside of there that used to be on the fuselage one, but now it's kind of glued into fuselage two. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that ring on there and then glue this onto that new ring. Just use the seam on the top of the fuselage to set the orientation for this piece. So if you guys don't have the ability to do head tracking, an easy solution is just hook it up to the rudder channel and just go left and right and you can just move it just like a servo. Now, that's when I get to my next point. I wanted the servo to rotate a full 180 degrees. Uh, even though on the back of the box they do say that the servo rotates 180 degrees, most servos will not due to the signal that the receiver puts out. So there's two different ways to fix this. One, you can take the servo part and put two fixed resistors in this. Unfortunately, due to the nine gram servo size, it's a little tight of a fit to fit those in there. So what I did is I bought a servo travel tuner, uh, and this is a lot easier way to do this. You can just go ahead and adjust the limits of the servo and make it rotate a full 180 degrees, and then you adjust the center point also. Next thing we're going to work on is getting the head tracking system working. Now we can go ahead and open up the Tally Ho head tracking unit and we're going to go ahead and mount it up to the goggles. Now a quick explanation of how this actually works. So we just have one servo on this, just a pan servo left and right. Uh, I have it set up on channel 7 on our receiver and this sets up like a trainer. So we have a controller and it has a trainer for it on the back here. So we're going to do a hard wire to our goggles with the head tracker unit. So when I turn my head left and right, it's just talking to the transmitter that talks to the receiver to tell the, what direction to go. Now to make this as simple as possible to set up, I just go ahead and follow the instructions. It says the default settings are pan function to channel 7. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and use. I'm going to go ahead and unplug the head tracker unit for now. Go into system settings and we're going to go down to trainer and go to wire trainer. Turn this to FPV. We'll select a switch. I'm going to change it to channel E. Select output channel to aux 2. Set the direction to normal and make the servo spin a whole 180 degrees. We've changed that to 150%. Now we can go to the monitoring tab here. We're going to go ahead and turn the head, head tracker, tracker on. on. You can see here that the AUX2 is moving with the head tracking unit. Now we can go ahead and power up the airplane. And then we can turn head tracking on. And this is actually how easy this is. It's crazy. I didn't actually turn on any computer, do any kind of programming or anything. The only thing the DJI unit is doing is giving the tally ho power and then everything else is just hooked up to a gyro to tell it to go left and right. Okay, now that we have the head tracker all set up, I've got one more thing that's included in the FPV kit. Now, most of you guys that fly FPV like to put the goggles on and fly around for quite a while. With EDFs, uh, it doesn't have the longest uh, flight time. What's more efficient is propellers. So if you guys want to, you guys can go ahead and just fly it just like this with the EDFs on there. If you guys would like to fly a little bit longer, 
Uh, you guys can go ahead and switch these out propellers. I designed a motor mount that will go inside this nacelle. And it'll hold up to an eight inch propeller. And what I could do is reprint this entire wing and reassemble it and repaint it and do all that. Rather than doing that, I'm actually gonna show you guys how to work on a 3D printed airplane. So first thing to do is just print out all the parts that you're gonna be cutting off the airplane. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and save the wing and cut the nacelles off. So we're gonna go ahead and just disconnect the EDFs. I'm gonna go ahead and then cut these ESCs out of the wing because I'm gonna replace them with 30 amp Avion ESC so I get real time run data for the battery. So now you can see I'm just going to go ahead and file this uh, nacelle, the old nacelle that I'm replacing. I'm just going to file it off the wing. Use a Dremel tool. This works really good. This is a ballpoint pen. I'm just sanding it down and uh, just being very careful to protect the wing. Now I'm using these ex servo extension wires just to pull the wires from the ESC through the wing. I'm going to go ahead and connect the brushless motor. This is a 2212 1400 kV brushless motor. Once you connect the uh, motor, this is very important, make sure to do a directional check at this point because you're not going to have access to those bullet connectors to change the direction of the motor. So I'm making this have counter rotating propellers and then once we have the direction set, we can go ahead and glue the nacelle onto the wing. Now we're going to go ahead and check the orientation for this motor mount to make sure that you get the wires to go through the right section and we'll just cut that open just to run the wires through. This yellow piece here is a depth tool. So we just go ahead and set that on there, glue this uh, motor mount because the motor mount's adjustable so you can put a different size motor on there. Now we can go ahead and glue on this front part of the nacelle. And then all we gotta do is just repeat the process on the other side to so just cut the nacelle off and file down the old uh, portion of the nacelle, glue it on there, set the depth for the brushless motor and I did replace the ESC on uh, that side too. Now we're just running all the wiring through the wing. This is why I showed you guys earlier how to wire this on the bench, just because it's kind of complicated how I'm running all this wiring through here. So this is the FPV kit for the C-17. It's the same exact airplane as I flew before. The only thing different is the new uh, nose piece here and also the nacelles. So you can just fly it just off the 50 millimeter EVF like I did before, or if you want longer runtime, uh, you can put the propellers on it. With the FPV changes, we're at 1550 with two three cell 2200 milliamps in there. So if I was only running one battery, I'd save about 170 grams. All right, so we have the CG set with the FPV kit on, the batteries. I have two battery packs in there. They used to be uh, right about here. Now I moved them all the way back to the back part of the um, battery tray. We got the whole crew out here today with the FPV C17, yeah. I did change out the receiver. I'm gonna go ahead and try to use AS3X and safe mode. See how it's, you can hear it's working. And I have it turned on to a dial here, so I'll turn it all the way off for the first, when I first take off. We're gonna plug the head tracker unit in, and then we'll turn on our DJI goggles. And I'll wait for that to power up. And then we gotta switch on our controller here. Head tracker on. Head tracker on. And then we got a center button up here on the camera. Why are you laughing at me? No, because me is looking at you in the background. <laughs> <laughs> now that we have everything set up, let's take it up and see how it flies. Oh yeah, it's got plenty of power with that on there. So now this should fly for a really long time because of the props? Yeah, because I'm flying at really low power. Uh huh. Alright, let's go ahead and try the head tracker out. I'll have my wife put on the head tracker at first just to have her see if it works. Mm. Holy cow. <laughs> Hold. Is it working? Yeah, that's sweet. Really? Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna turn on the head tracking unit. Okay. Head okay. Holy cow. So now you can hit the center button on that on the button there on the bottom of the tracker, and that'll center it. Oh, I see. Okay, now you should be able to turn your head left, right. How's the camera footage? Is it pretty clear? Yeah, it's very clear. Really? Okay. It's very clear. Want to see my mind? What it is? That thing is seriously so cool. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay, here comes the wind, okay. and it's actually tracking pretty good with oh, uh, really the AS3X. It's really stable with that. That's pretty cool. 
mean, it's flying like it's on rails right now, and it's pretty, the wind just picked up pretty good. Got it, pretty windy. Now that was pretty sweet. I flew it for probably 10 minutes right there, so I'll go check the batteries. Wow, it is windy out here now. It is cow. so windy. <laughs> the wind just picked up like, holy cow. It's gonna take off. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna take off. Uh, so that was sweet. Unfortunately, yeah, once the wind picks up here in Vegas, it kind of doesn't die down. So that's probably only gonna be one flight for us today. Dude, that was awesome, that FPV camera. Unfortunately, I didn't get to try it out. My wife, she said it was really cool. So we'll uh, watch the camera footage back and uh, I'll take it out here again and fly FPV for myself. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next build.